Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be going over the machine simulation. Now, don't get that confused with Mastercam simulation where you verify basically the machining of the part. In the machine simulation, you're verifying the part inside your machine being machined as well. This way, you can basically double check and make sure that your tool, for example, is not running into any other part of the machine as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So go to the machine tab right on top over here. And you're going to see all the way over here to the right a machine simulation section with a few options run back plot and verify now before you can select any of these you need to click on this arrow right here and expand that that should open up the machine simulation the first thing is selecting the type of machine that you want for example right now I have a five axis machine vertical mill center and that's the one I want to use to machine my part so go ahead and select this one from the list but you're not limited to that. There's a bunch of machines here. And also there's a three axis and a four axis machine. For our sake, we are using a five axis machine to machine our part. Now for the workpiece, the workpiece geometry, we want to select all elements. You can actually select the geometry to be from a level, none, or from an STL file that you have saved. Same thing with the position. The position, this is the position basically of your part. Do you want the Mastercam to automatically detect that for you, which I recommend, or you have the option to translate in X, Y, and Z, which means you place the position of the part. So say you run the simulation, you don't like where the position of the part is, and you want to move it around, that's how you can come back and move it around. Okay? For the fixture, you can also have the fixture be at a level that you have maybe drawn at a level and from an STL file, or use Mastercam's fixture definition. We're going to keep it at none because we did not create a fixture for it. The stock, this is where uh, the stock, where do you want to load the stock from basically? If you double click on that or click the down arrow, you can use no stock, use Mastercam stock definition if you've defined it under the properties. From a level, if you have a level created specially for the stock and load an STL file. For our sake, we want to click load STL file, click on the three dots over here, and I saved one that is .stl end. And what I've done is what I selected the verify and went to the Mastercam simulation. After I run my uh, simulation, I'm able to save that over there. And that's where I saved my stock. Okay. So uh, tolerance, we're going to keep it the same. And stock to leave on target workpiece, we're going to keep it at zero. Miscellaneous over here allows you to auto start as soon as you basically set that up and you run the simulation, it automatically starts machining your part if you have this selected. We're going to keep it not selected. Over here at the bottom, add intermediate positions as needed for simulation. We're going to keep it at process only provided move. Okay. And for colors and shortcut, we're going to use Mastercam settings and move list display values. You have a few options over here. You can choose absolute machine access value at top uh, tooltip relative to workpiece position value at tooltip and relative to workpiece position values. We're going to keep it at the first one at the default and go ahead, either select OK and select simulate. For our sake, we're going to select OK. Once you select OK, what you want to do is come over here and select the run button. Depending on how complex your part is, that actually might take a little bit. So this is my Mastercam or machine simulation in Mastercam. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out. You're going to notice my stock is on my part. This is a five axis machine. Okay. You can see the rotation of my part this way and the table I have in the center rotates around as well. Okay. So I'm going to zoom in and there is my machine. Again, this is strictly to watch your part be machined inside the machine to verify that possibly your tool is not going to come in and hit anything. Now, as you can see, I'm going to zoom in and you notice that there's no tool to start. Now, if you come over here to the right under tool and select show, now you'll notice that the tool shows up. So you can play around with the visibility of the tool path, the tool, the workpiece itself. So you can actually make it disappear if you want or make it appear. So this is the workpiece when it's done. You can see it right there. If I actually hide it, you'll see that it's only the stock now. And I highly suggest you keep it at the stock. This way you can see the final part and compare it to the workpiece. You can also make the stock transparent or hide it even. So you can play around with everything. The machine housing, you can even hide that as well. You don't see the housing in the back anymore. Let me go ahead and show it. 
and there's the housing in the back. So sometimes there's a lot of things over here that you really don't want to see. You maybe you just want to see the top end over here and this part right here, and you can uh, vi make those visible and not visible. The views over here, obviously, they're self-explanatory. They're fit to screen to make it fit to screen. You can make it isometric, top, front, bottom. And you notice that in the machine simulation, it's a little bit different. As soon as you click something, it automatically updates. It doesn't move your part just like mesh or cam simulation does. So this is your speed run. So depending how fast and slow you want it to uh, run your machining uh, operation, you can move the bar back and forth. And these are the controls. Obviously, run is to run it, stop, fast forward. You can do step forward as well and operations as well. And also restart it. On the left side over here is a simulation. You can do material removal. Okay. And C code where you can time mode or length mode. And under machine, you can have it focused basically on the workpiece stock or the tool. We're going to have it at the machine. All right. And go ahead after that and press play to see it. Now I'm going to zoom in and you can see that it's actually quite fast. Let's go ahead and slow it down so you can see it a little bit better. And you see your tool come in and it's machining side to side. You can see that your fixture is rotating and not your uh, head. So it's rotating back and forth as it's, as it's machining. Let me go ahead and fast forward that a little bit. There you go. I'm going to go ahead and press play. Okay, so I fast forwarded all the way to the point that it actually stopped. I'm going to stop right there to see where it is. Let me go keep going. I want to fast forward it until you see the final part. So let me keep going until you see some kind of form of the part, just like you see in MeshroCam itself. So there you go. You're going to start to see the shape being formed as it's machining back and forth. I fast forward that. I'm going to zoom out real quick. You can see how fast that's going as I move my run speed all the way to the right. And now I'm going to stop it real quick. And there you go. You can see your part being formed to the final uh, shape of the part. Okay. So you can play around with that and you can see that it's not actually stopping. Every time it creates a collision, it actually stops and tells you and whatever is actually colliding with whatever it actually shows up in red. So for example, if your tool collides with this part of the machine, the tool turns red and the machine turns red and the whole operation stops to tell you that there is a collision. And this is where, this is the main reason why you would be using something like this is to verify that there's no collisions. You can also go to the verify screen over here. Okay. And there's a few more options for you. And there's also view. You can tell them what you want to view. If you want to do an access, view analysis, even measure uh, between distances. We won't go over these right now. We'll go over them in our in the first exercise that will actually uh, create a machining uh, simulation for. This way we can understand what are the usages behind the machine simulation.